Question number six is about the photoelectric effect. Begin by stating what is meant by the photoelectric effect. So it is when electrons are released from the surface of a metal when light or photons instant on it. Part two, state what is meant by an electron volt and EV. So it is when it is the energy required to accelerate one electron through a potential difference of one volt. And part three, calculate the value of five electron volts in SI units, or the SI unit for energy is the joule. So 5.0 multiplied by the charge of one electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That is the conversion factor between joules and electron volts gives us 8 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Part B, a photon of energy, 8 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, is instant on a clean zinc surface that can cause photoelectric emission. The maximum kinetic energy of an electron emitted from this surface is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. To start with, we need to define the term work function of a metal. So the work function is the minimum amount of energy required to release an electron from a metal surface. And part two asks us to calculate the work function for zinc. So the equation we have is HF equals phi, the work function, plus the maximum kinetic energy. Now, E equals HF, and we know that the energy of the incident photon is 8 times 10 to the minus 19. So we can rearrange this equation, we can get rid of the HF term here. So we get the work function equals the energy of the photon, take away the maximum kinetic energy of the electron, which equals 8 times 10 to the minus 19, take away 1.1 times 10 to the minus 19, which gives us 6.9 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And for part two, we need to show that the maximum speed V of an electron emitted from the surface is around about five times 10 to the power of five meters per second. So we know that kinetic energy equals half mv squared. So therefore V is going to be equal to two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass, and then the square root of all of that. So, so we're left with 2 times 1.1 times 10 to the minus 19, divided by 
the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilograms. which gives us 4.91 times 10 to the power of 5 meters per second, which is very similar to the 5 times 10 to the power of 5. Part 2 asks us to calculate the de Broglie wavelength of an electron emitted from the surface at the maximum speed. Now we know that the maximum speed here, given to us in the previous question, is 5.0 approximately times 10 to the power of 5 meters per second. And the equation for de Broglie wavelength is lambda equals h over mv, where h is the Planck constant, so that's 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34, divided by the mass here, which is the mass of an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the power of minus 31. This information is all on your formula sheet. Multiplied by our velocity v, which is 5 times 10 to the power of 5. That gives us a de Broglie wavelength of 1.46 times 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. Part C describes how a beam of electrons can travel through a thin sheet of graphite place perpendicular to the beam to produce a pattern of rings on a fluorescent screen. We need to explain why this pattern is produced. The spacing between the atoms is around 2.5 times 10 to the minus 10. So the electrons behave as waves. And their wavelength is similar to the spacing therefore diffraction occurs producing the ring pattern The regular pattern of the atomic structure acts as a grating causing interference. Part 2 asks us to explain whether or not our electrons from B part 2 will be suitable for use in this experiment. Well, our wavelength was around 1.46 times 10 to the minus 9 metres, but the spacing was around 2.5 times 10 to the minus 10 metres. So there's an order of magnitude difference between them there. So the there will be no diffraction. because spacing or the gap is around 10 times larger than the wavelength.